Today we geek out about Get Billy the Kid. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lee with Geek City USA here, and today we're going to talk about a new game by Caper Games called Get Billy the Kid. Now, this is a social deduction game for four to eight players in which the majority of the players are going to take on the role of the lawman, and the other players, or player if only one, will take on the role of Billy the Kid. You'll add in a couple of outlaws if there's more than uh, four players. Uh, but the goal is for the lawman to obviously arrest or eliminate Billy the Kid. And in the meantime, Billy the Kid and his outlaw band of misfits is going to try to last a full seven hours and escape with the bag of gold. I'm going to take you over here. I'll give you a brief overview on how the game is played and what the rules are. And then we'll come back here and I'll give you our thoughts on the game. All right, so this here is Get Billy the Kid. Now I do wanna point out first that this is all a print and play copy of the game, so definitely check out the Kickstarter page for what the final components will look like as some art is still being developed. You see here we have five characters, and I could bring you up so you can see it a little closer, but this game supports four to eight players. So as you can see here, this is just printed out on a card stock um, with the five characters that currently exist today. And here are their player cards. You can see we've got the Pat Garrett, the Billy the Kid, uh, we have Doc Holliday, we have Wyatt Earp, and we have Martha Garcia. Now when you play this game, if you play a four player game, you're not going to include Martha Garcia. She's actually a helper to Billy the Kid. So in the setup here that I have, we're actually going to leave Martha Garcia out for the time being. Um, I just, I, I set up a four player game so you could get an idea of what the game looked like and what the game played like without um, taking up too much table space here. I figured it was better to have a closer look. Also, these here are the clock tokens from Get Adler. So this game is based upon the main components of Get Adler if you have played it. Um, however, there are a few additional additions and this is also a Wild West theme which is uh, currently one of the hot themes that are out right now. And you can see here the art is very, uh, very catchy for this uh, Wild West theme game. But let me talk about the setup here. Now, these cards here, you see these are sleeved. This is not what the backs will look like. I have sleeved the copy of the game. Everybody's gonna start out with seven cards, and you will also deal a roll to each player face down. So we'll just go ahead, and I really don't even need to do it face down. We'll do it face up for the sake of this video here. Um, but obviously, you are going to keep your identities 100% secret from all of your opponents. Now you also have here a card reference sheet and this shows you what each of the card types, what they do, as well as this number over here next to each one of them. This indicates how many of each copy of this card are in with whether it's a four, five, six, seven, or eight player game of this. Now on the Get Adler, this was the back of the player card, which I'm Assuming, I would assume that it might be the same again. I don't know for sure, but it makes sense to me because that's how it was in Get Adler. However, again, definitely check out the Kickstarter for what it will actually look like. Now you see one of the differences in Get Billy the Kid is you have the town. And what you're going to do is you're going to place two cards face up off to the side and this is the town. And we will talk about what the town is later. If you get two cards that match, you're going to discard one of them. Uh, also, if you turn up a question card, you're going to discard that and replace it as well. Now this right here is the turn marker. We will give it to Pat Garrett here. We're gonna call him player one for the sake of this game. Now the goal in Get Billy the Kid is for the lawmen to determine who is who and figure out which character is Billy the Kid and then to either arrest Billy the Kid or to eliminate Billy the Kid, which is a fancy way of saying have a shootout and have Billy the Kid lose. Now, Billy the Kid wins if he can either eliminate all the lawmen or make it through, if you see here, there's this clock stack. These are from, like I said, Get Adler. And if you can make it through the end of seven rounds of the game and Billy the Kid has a bag of gold in his hand, that means he escapes and he is victorious. So the base gameplay of this is actually very, very simple. It's something that's easy to pick up. What you will do, and we will start with Pat Garrett here and move this card out of the way just to give a little room, is you will look at your hand. Now you see here, this is the card that the lawmen will need to arrest Billy the Kid. So as soon as they figure out who Billy the Kid is, they can play this to try to arrest them. But you cannot do that until you're past these first three hours in the game. And you'll notice here at least 
uh, for Git Adler, and I would assume it'd be something similar for Git Billy the Kid, but the first three are a different color. So not until after you're done with these first three rounds can you actually do an arrest. But this is the card that you would need as a lawman when you try to arrest somebody. Now each of these other cards are going to have a different power to them. And again, all of that is explained here on this card reference sheet. But when we start, you see as Pat Garrett, you are going to draw one card and add it to your hand. And you will look at all the cards that you have. Now let's look at what Pat Garrett has. This is an, an escape card which is used later on when we try to arrest Billy the Kid and we'll talk about that later so we'll set that aside. This is the arrest card, we can't do this for a few turns. Now the rifle here, this lets us look at any other player's card. So after we draw up, we're going to play a card and then do the action that it says. Now we'll hold off a minute before we play the rifle card. The gold is what Billy the Kid needs to escape. And the question mark is where uh, really the meat of the first few rounds of the game is going to come from. And then here's the revolver here, and this is used in a shootout. So when you identify who the bad guy is, if it goes down to a shootout, you definitely want to have as many of these in your hand as possible. But let's just start from the beginning here. Um, for Pat Garrett, we would play this question mark card, and what you do is you ask a yes and no question, and you're going to ask based on the characteristics you find on this card. So you'll identify a player, because obviously you don't know who's on your side and who's not, and let's say Pat Garrett is going to ask this character, he's trying to figure out if he is Billy the Kid. Now Billy the Kid has a blue hat. So Pat Garrett can ask Wyatt Earp, say, because he played this card, do you have a blue hat? Now this character, this person here, can only, ask, only answer yes or no. So they would say, no, I don't have a blue hat. So Pat Garrett would, in theory, assume that this was not Billy the Kid. Now there is one little, uh, little hiccup in that plan is Billy the Kid can lie. So if you ask Billy the Kid what they are or you know, what characteristics they have, Billy the Kid is allowed to lie about their characteristics. So definitely keep that in mind. But so in this case, Pat Garrett asked the question and we have no more uh, or nothing else to do. You have seven cards in your hand, so he can set his deck down and we would come over to Doc Holliday. Now this follows whoever the current player is and that's important because later on when you start to attempt to arrest, different people can jump in. So you always want to remember who your last player was. So Doc Holliday would take a turn. Now let's go through his hand. Let's draw up and we'll talk about what we have in our hand here. And we could start actually with the binoculars that we just drew. Now the binoculars, if Doc Holliday were to play that, you could pick any player and blindly take a card from their hand and replace it with one from his own hand. And then this here, this is the, as a disguise. Now this is useful only for Billy the Kid when he is, when somebody tries to arrest him, he can play this card, and this is an escape card, but this lets him get away right away. And if you recall, if we look at the, uh, the card reference sheet, you'll notice here there are very few disguise cards in the deck. There's only one for a four, five, or six player game, and there's two in a seven and eight player game. So this card here is incredibly rare and incredibly useful for Billy the Kid. This here is an another escape card. It's a location. We have our question marks, and looks like that's about it. Now there are a handful of different um, location cards. So anything that you'll see from here on out that looks like a picture or maybe a horse, that is a location card. So, and we'll come, we'll talk about that a little more when we talk about the arresting portion of the game. But now Doc Holliday can play this question mark, and he's going to ask, uh, well, we can ask this character here, you know, are you wearing a blue hat? Now this being Billy the Kid, Billy the Kid can lie about it. So, okay, so he says, no, I don't have a blue hat, so we'll carry on. We'll go over to Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp will draw, will draw up a card, and let's see if we have any cards. Okay, so not a whole lot that we can um, do anything with right now, but Wyatt Earp can dis discard this gold card. Now what that kind of tells everybody else at the table is I'm probably not Billy the Kid because I would need this card to win the game. So that would be the end of Wyatt Earp's turn. Now Wyatt Earp could have asked the question, but we didn't. I'm just kind of showing you the, the flow of the game. Now Billy the Kid, he can draw up, he'll take a card. Now Billy the Kid, now this, this is great for Billy the Kid, have a couple of revolvers, a lot of revolvers, uh, a couple of gold cards, an escape card, but what Billy the Kid will do as well is he will discard a gold card, 
just so that way everybody thinks that he's not Billy the Kid, and it would come back here to Pat Garrett. I'm not passing this around, I should be. Come back to Pat Garrett. We have made it through the first hour of the game. Now let's say that we are on the fourth hour of the game. Now we're allowed to try to arrest people. So we could, as Pat Garrett, let's say it's Pat Garrett's turn. Do we have an arrest card? We do. Let's make a false arrest. Pat Garrett's gonna say, okay, you to my left. I think that you are Billy the Kid. Now remember, at this point, everybody's cards, and let me just flip these down now for the next few turns. Everybody's cards are face down, so we don't know who everybody is. Now if this character guessed this character, obviously this is not Billy the Kid, this is Doc Holliday, so he would say, wrong, that's a false arrest, so this would get discarded. Now these two characters are each going to be out for one turn. So we would go ahead and skip Doc Holliday's turn. We would come up to this guy. So he is going to draw up a card. And you know what? We have an arrest card. So we know this player, because it's a four player game, he's gonna know that obviously he tried to arrest him. That was failed. So he's gonna obviously figure out that this is Billy the Kid. He's going to play this arrest card and say, are you Billy the Kid? I think you are. Let's see what else is in his hand. We have guns for a shootout, so that could get pretty good. Now this character will say, yes, I am Billy the Kid, and now we are going to reveal all character cards. And we'll move that because it's actually his turn. And now we can visit the town. These two cards we flipped over at the beginning. But first, Billy needs to respond to this arrest. So now Billy's gonna look at his hand, and he has options. He can start a shootout if he wants to and start shooting at Wyatt Earp, or he can try to go to, a, uh, go to a hideout and run away. Now, if Billy the Kid had any uh, arrest cards in his hand, at this point, you could discard him and draw new cards. But, so in this case, let's say Billy the Kid is going to try to escape. Now, all the other players in the game have the opportunity to see if they can match this card. So if they can match that card, they can go to that location. And it just so happens that they can't. So in this case, Billy the Kid would have just escaped. Now, each player would actually draw back up three, four, five, six, seven, two, seven cards. So in this case, Billy the Kid, one, two, three, four, five, six, will draw a seventh card. Now, we can move over to Billy's turn. Let's kind of clean this up a little bit here. Now Billy can draw a card. Now here, this is good, we drew another location. And also, Billy wants to get rid of the question mark, and when you play the question mark, it's a draw again. And we see here now we have two different locations. Now say for example that Billy the Kid did not draw a card out of the deck. Now Billy the Kid could have spent a gold card and gone to the town. Now if the kid goes to the town, he would discard that gold card and pick either one of these items here. Now in this case, he's gonna grab onto the, uh, to the dynamite here, and that would count as his play for the game, because you should now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards in his hand. And it would come back to Pat Garrett. So we can go ahead and refill this here. That's an arrest card. Now we'll remove this, because another hour has gone by in the day. And if we recall, Pat Garrett was knocked out in the last, uh, in the last round, so we'll come over to Doc Holliday. In Doc Holliday, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Now Doc Holliday does not have an arrest card, so this actually worked out well for us because he also has gold. Because the lawmen can also go to the town, but they can only buy the arrest card. So Doc Holliday is going to discard his gold. He's going to pick up this arrest card, and you guessed it, He's going to say, okay, Billy the Kid, I'm going to arrest you. Now, Billy's gonna look at his cards here, and he's gonna say, well, I could try to run away and escape, but that wouldn't show you guys how this uh, shootout element of the game worked. So Billy the Kid is gonna say, uh-uh, I'm shooting at you, buddy, to which now Doc Holliday can reply with another gun. So Doc Holliday will play a gun. Okay, now it is up to Billy the Kid. So Billy's gonna look at his deck, or his hand next here, and we're in the midst of a shootout, so he's gonna play another gun. So right now, Doc Holliday's kinda sweating this one, 
and he doesn't have any more guns. So now what happens now is Doc Holliday has actually lost this shootout and he would be eliminated from the game at this point. Now, uh, you don't have to worry too much because the game moves quick enough that player elimination is actually okay. So now what happens is, you know, these cards will all get discarded and all the players who are involved in the arresting will get to draw up their cards. So uh, Billy the Kid has one, two, three, four, five cards left. Now, typically you would draw from the deck, but in this case you start with the player who was eliminated. So he gets, the Billy the Kid gets to draw up two cards, so he would take two from Doc Holliday's hand, the rest can get discarded, and Doc Holliday would be eliminated. So we'll go over to Wyatt Earp now, and Wyatt Earp, oh, and this will get refilled as well, and... Uh, Wyatt Earp, oh, these will actually get discarded here, so let's, there we go, another arrest card. So Wyatt Earp will look at his hand. Now the question mark cards are pretty good because you can play them and draw up. You just, it's basically a go again card. At this point in the game, question marks do us no good, we want to get rid of them. Uh, what else does Wyatt Earp have? Not a lot of good stuff that he's looking for, so he's going to play a question mark card to draw up, play another question mark card to draw up, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. We never drew in the first place. All right, so this is what Wyatt Earp has. Now that didn't really work out. We got rid of those question mark cards, but we didn't get an arrest card. And we didn't have any gold in the beginning to go here. So at this point, um, what we'll do here is Wyatt Earp will play the rifle and look at Billy the Kid's hand. So Wyatt Earp now knows what to expect. So now we'll pass this over to Billy the Kid who is out of, oh, we have gold, and we're pretty well stacked in order to uh, make a getaway. So Billy the Kid can draw up, and we can play this card just to look at maybe what one of these other characters, or what one of the other players have as far as escape cards, so he knows what to play. And then we would continue on and go on and on until either the, the kid is arrested or eliminated, or until, let's say, that this was the seventh round, we went all the way around, and what would have been the eighth, if we didn't capture Billy the Kid, Billy the Kid would win. Now, there is one small twist to this game. Now, as an advanced variant, what can happen here is Doc Holliday can actually be swayed to join the outlaw player's team. Now, if you're playing with multiple outlaws, let's say we had a five player game and Martha Garcia was here, uh, you can't sway Doc Holliday to become an outlaw unless one outlaw has at least been eliminated. So if you're playing with uh, eight players, I'm assuming there's going to be multiple outlaws more than just Billy the Kid and Martha Garcia, and you can, once one's eliminated, you can sway Doc Holliday. Now, how you do that is on an outlaw's turn, when you draw a card, instead of playing a card, you can play a gold card into the pot. And that would be your turn. And what can happen then is on Doc Holliday's turn, instead of, you know, drawing cards or anything, he can actually choose to draw the pot and he would take all the gold cards into his hand. He can then discard any cards in his hand as long as he discards down to seven cards. So if he picks up three gold cards, he can put those in his hand and discard three cards and they can be any cards. They can be the three gold cards or not. But you just added a whole different element of play to the game because you have added mid game or three quarters of the way through the game you added another outlaw into the mix, which is a really cool vibe to the game. It adds a really neat element, especially if, if you're that person that has Doc Holliday and you're like, you know what? We are not looking good here. We're gonna lose this game. So you know what? I'm gonna jump over to their team. I'm a bad guy now. That's just how it works. And it creates a really cool experience at the table. But anyway, that is a high level overview on how to play Get Billy the Kid. Now we're gonna take you back up top and I will give you my thoughts on the game. All right, now that was Get Billy the Kid. Now, again, I wanna mention that that was a print and play copy of the game that I had put together, so definitely check out the Kickstarter page for a final glance at what all of the finalized art and everything, all the components will actually look like. And I do wanna to touch on that art because I really like the art style in the game. The art that has been done so far, I think looks great. It's a cool cartoony style, and the art in Get Adler was great for the theme that was there, but I feel like this does a great job at capturing that Western theme, yet keeping the game 
game fun and accessible to all sorts of players. All right, now let's talk about the gameplay in Get Billy the Kid. I, I love the fact that in Get Billy the Kid that you're not only looking to determine who is who, you're doing that part for the first few turns of the game, trying to figure out who is who and maybe build your hand for later on. But once you figure out what player is the good guys, or are the good guys, and what player is Billy the Kid, that's when the real game kicks in because the element of trying to arrest the outlaw, trying to arrest Billy the Kid, or if you are Billy the Kid, figuring out what card you want to play, if you want to run away or engage in a, in a shootout, just make the game, it really comes alive at the table. And it's such a good, like I said, such a good social element at the table. It's a great interaction and it just sings. The gameplay is very easy to pick up. It's very easy to teach. Uh, we've played this with our family, like with Get Adler, we've played it with our kids. We've played it with people that play a lot of games a lot of social deduction games and it has always been well received. Now moving on to the replayability factor of the game, given this is a social deduction game uh, that is a quick setup and a quick play, you know you can play a game in about 20 minutes, it's definitely a game that you can replay over and over again. You never know who Billy the Kid's going to be, you never know what cards you have and the cards you have are actually going to dictate your play style because you don't know as, for example, again, as Billy the Kid or as the outlaw, are you going to engage in a shootout? Are you going to try to escape? And then as the, uh, as the lawmakers, or as the lawmen, are you going to try to arrest right away or do you want to wait? Do you want to build a better hand so that way you get, you know, try to get more locations later on? Um, so it definitely lends itself to a lot of replayability. Now let's move on to the audience of this game. Now obviously if you like social deduction games, I think you will very much enjoy this game because it takes the aspects of a standard social deduction game like a lot of the other ones and adds to what I think uh, to the game a little bit more gameplay to it. So you're not just figuring out who's who, it goes a little deeper than that and it's a very rewarding feeling. Now I also think that this is something that is perfect for families and perfect for a lot of people who aren't into games. This is a game you can play on family game night, you can play with your neighbors, uh, you can play with people that aren't gamers at all. So really the reach of the game is quite far and wide and I think that's definitely a plus when it comes to the game. Now all in all, I absolutely love Get Billy the Kid. It takes those gameplay elements that I loved in Get Adler, which was my favorite social deduction game, but the theme itself, I wasn't very familiar with the Sherlock Holmes lore, so for me, I, I, that theme kind of missed me. But with uh, Get Billy the Kid, I grew up watching Bonanza with my grandpa. I grew up watching Clint Eastwood movies. They bring back fond memories. I love the Western theme. And the Western theme is really the new zombies. It's the hot thing right now. You've got great Western trailers, you've got Western legends, all these other games that are hugely popular. Western themes are what's hot right now. And the art on this game is very accessible, it's very good. Uh, it's a game that can be played by people young and old, gamers and non-gamers alike. And not only that, again, it takes those core elements from Get Adler and it sprinkles in, it adds that town element and adds that little flip-flop where you take Doc Holliday and he can switch sides from being a, a, a lawman to a outlaw, which I thought was a great aspect of the game. It really, really added a lot of interaction at the table and I absolutely enjoyed it. I would definitely suggest if you like social deduction games or you're a fan of the Western theme, you check this game out. All right guys, that's it. I'm Lee with Geek City USA. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Be sure to subscribe if you don't already. Comment down below, like the video, check us out on social media, and interact with us. We love to chit chat with people and get to know you. Again, thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you guys next time. Cheers.